Okay, I have uh, Takahashi uh, seven and a half millimeter LE multi coated eyepiece. I'm waiting for it. Probably this is that one. Let's open and see. Okay, now let's open this uh, eyepiece. Impressive, look. Takahashi Ocular LE seven and a half millimeter. Coland, 52 degrees. LE seven and a half. Okay, it's very impressive inside. The I must say the packaging, the box is really nice feeling. Impressive, lightweight but full metal and rubber a hand grip and this one looks nice oh nice feel the stuff and let's open the cap oh this rubber I got is also nice quality and big lens here Really waiting for the night sky to become clear again. It's at the moment raining. So, Takashi makes one of the best eyepieces, and I've read very good reviews of it. Of course, I will do my own judgment on this, but we are waiting for that just to see how it will end up. But so far, so good. Impressed. So, nice eyepiece. Beautiful design. Yeah, really good. Looking forward to test it under the stars and in daylight. I'm now uh, looking at the planet Venus with the Takashi multi-coated lung eye relief 7.5 millimeter, 52 degrees eyepiece through the Lyra 102 F11 telescope, refracted telescope. And the image quality I was comparing with the Teleview Nagler 7 millimeter this is the original, or as they call it, tape one, uh, Nagler. Uh, with the Takashi, the horns of the crescent of the Venus is more visible. The image with the Nagler is a little bit brighter and cleaner, but the clarity and the details I can see, sharp focus in this Takashi is better than this. Both of them are good, uh, just a slightly this is better. Uh, I can see the horns of the uh, crescent of the Venus clear and the lens looks almost identical in size the eye relief of the Takashi of course is 20 millimeter with this one is uh, uh, 13 millimeter or 11 millimeter the field of view of this is 82 and with this is 52 I don't feel that uh, that is affecting the view as much as I expected. A tad better in this. Although it's not as bright as of, as of the Nagler, Teleview Nagler, but the clarity and the sharpness of the focus is better. This telescope, of course, I have to show that is a feather touch uh, dualist crayford um, 
focuser. That is 10 to 1. So 10 turn of this equals to 1 turn of this. And uh, yeah, I'm really impressed. Both of them are good. Uh, with this one, I could even look 2.3.2 and I could get an image, but the image was very uh, swiftly moving. This is an Adopsonian mount for the Skull Watcher Skymax 130 flex tube. And anyway, I'm continuing to observe, and I think Takashi, a tad slightly an epsilon is better than the Nagler. Interesting enough, this Teleview Nagler 7mm uh, is for parafocal with the tall plus all 25mm. Uh, this is a Nagler original, tape 1 as you call, and this is the tall plus all 25mm. I was watching with this, then I changed to this. I used this as a finder, and then I changed to this. They need to change the focus, the parafocal. Means you don't need to move the focus away. So, another discovery. But well, the Nagda 7mm is not a uh, uh, parafocal with a 7.5mm Takahashi. So, they're not parafocal. You, can, you have to change the um, focus. Uh, with this telescope, which is a Lyra 102 F11, the amount of the chromatic aberration is very minuscule. You see the some, uh, which is a very high magnification now at uh, with this 7.5 millimeter uh, but is managed well is not disturbing as much as when you have a normal upper chromatic uh, achromatic telescope as f5 or something like that like this car watcher that i have uh, so it's well managed here it's because of the long focal length so really good really good i'm impressed just see some violet color blue violet color it's not bright enough, it's not purple at all. I've now compared the Nagler uh, 7mm original or tape 1 with the Takahashi 7.5mm 52 degrees eyepiece. Okay, uh, this is heavier, almost double the weight of this one. Beside that, it has more elements, more lenses in this. So I think it's around seven to eight. This is four or five, I think, elements, five. I see in this ghosting images and a big halo around, for example, on a bright object like Venus. In this one, I don't see that. The lighter scatter in this one is better controlled than this one. So eventually that means that you will have a better contrast. Uh, between the bright and dark uh, parts of the view. With this one you have that uh, same level of the bright uh, brightness as this, light to scatter, but again that halo is annoying. There are so many optical elements in this that uh, they cause this halo around the object. So which one I prefer? Uh, both of them are very very close together if I have to use choose one, probably I will choose this one. It is more contrasty. This one gets annoying sometimes. There is too much halo and ghost light in this. Ghost light, yeah, you heard the right ghost light. And yeah, that's what what's makes the difference. And this is the Nagler original. I don't know about the Nagler tape six, what what's happened with that one. It's eighty two degrees. This one with some optical gimmicks to make that. This is 52 degrees and five elements only. It's almost as good as a, a orthoscopic without having actually the narrow field of view or eye relief of the orthoscopic. So better than that.
Okay, I'm now looking through the uh, Max Vision 24 millimeter 82 degrees eyepiece. I must say the image is crisp. Video is nothing compared to what you can see visually. Probably is around just showing to 20% of the visual uh, sharpness of what is actually visible. Let's open bridge you see again. It's, it's kind of deeming and uh, oh, Unfocusing is because of the use of the autofocus. Mm -hmm. 